Welcome to Master New Manor and our journey to renovate this gorgeous building. Thanks for joining us again this week. Uh, we're going to finish off the two upstairs windows and the middle floor window. Having added all of the framework to both the windows upstairs and it being secured in place with both a whole range of nails and glue and uh, some screws, uh, everything is now watertight and wind tight, which is fantastic. The next step is to get to paint. When I say get to paint, I mean Judy needs to get to paint because I'm in the UK. The paint on. The window is starting to almost look finished. It does highlight that the ceiling and uh, the surrounding white paint clearly is doing. That's a job for the autumn. It's quite awkward hanging a pole from these windows because nothing to sort of really put the pole on. We've also got this extra bit with the triangle above. So I've got one of those expanding poles just put up for the moment. It does mean we need to start being curtain up in here. These are obviously the tie back to be added yet. And in terms of a tie back, uh, we've managed to get this lovely um, old brass curtain tie back we found in a nice piquant. Um, because the way the window is as a, as a frame, there's nowhere to add sort of proper tie back. So I've just fashioned a piece of wood, painted it white, added it to the wall, and then put this here. And then the curtain goes around it. And therefore, when the curtains hold back, it frames the window. Now, I'd like to have two curtains here, but to be honest with you, the, the gap isn't wide enough to have two curtains. Uh, but that does frame the window quite nicely. And whilst they don't match, the two little cushions on the window. Um, that's so you can sit and read, but more importantly, it's for the cat. Some of the windows upstairs, like this, which is the dressing room, do have two curtains on, but they're very thin curtains, but it's still, uh, it does frame the window, but it does block out a little bit more light than one curtain. And there's the second window painted. Um, now the air is definitely not coming in, you can, it's a bit of a wind going on outside um, and there's no, no wind coming through the window, which is great. Um, clearly there's a lot more work to be done and I don't think I've shared with this room with you yet, but this is one of the two upstairs attic rooms on the right hand side of the house. Um, whilst we've got some furniture and we have used them when we had guests before, it's a little bit tired of this. Got a lot of work to be done in this room um, and the adjoining room, including the fact that uh, this wall here uh, or half of this wall is going to come down. But that is for another time. Hopefully we can have that done before Christmas. The middle floor window, the window itself, wasn't a problem. It was a surround. Um, the wood hadn't been oiled or cleaned for quite some time and was certainly in desperate need of, of oiling because the amount of sunlight it gets. The shelf, as if you may remember from last time, I removed tiles from it um, and discovered that a really nice piece of wood underneath just a little bit of rot in one corner, but generally the wood was good. Once we cleaned and oiled all the wood and started making some repairs, we also realised that we had the chance we could do the radiator. So Julie's here painting it in a green colour to match the walls. I'd have said before, it takes a lot to get the ladder in this location, and so we do everything we can whilst we can. And that includes oiling all the wood that faces through the, the window because it's been hit by the sunlight. It was in desperate need of, of oiling. It was really dry. It took about four or five lots of oiling with a lovely orange wood oil, which we use on all our furniture. There was one small patch of rotten wood on the right hand side of the window and um, it was easily cut out and we were able to replace the wood. Going to be honest, thought this was going to be a worse job than it is. I've managed to get um, mainly all the bits of old plaster and um, expanding foam out of the joint. Quickly, I've also managed to find um, a bit of a window bracket uh, just shoved in the hole. Quite interesting. So you can see here there is some old woodworm holes, but they're they're pretty okay. Uh, this wood is solid, which is quite nice. So is that. I've cut off a big chunk of wood. Um, so you can see the difference there. I managed to cut that off. Um, as we go around the corner, um, I've managed to cut off the bottom part of this. This wood again is nice and solid, which is good to say. It's not as bad as I first thought. Like pretty much most of the things in the house, this panel has dropped over the years because the house has subsided. It does mean there's now a gap between the bit of the panel. So I'm going to try and solve that somehow. The first thing I'm going to do is cut out any rubbish there. Then I'm going to fill it and then use some wood putty to finish it off. 
So Judy's now gone back up and oiled all the panels on the side, as you can see, just about see, depending on the light, I suppose. Um, the panels there have now been oiled. It's really helped the wood. We've managed to fill the holes with some oak that we found in the garage and uh, secured it in place. Julie is now using wood putty to cover all the joints and make the whole area nice and smooth. Admittedly, we did have one rookie mistake. We thought the colour on the tin was the colour of the wood uh, putty inside. It wasn't, so we had to do this twice, sadly, but we learned. And it was only the top layer we had to replace. Once the wood putty was dry and we knew that the wood that we put in the holes was nice and secure, uh, Judy was able to get to and sand all of the windowsill. Um, to start with, she used the, the electric sander. And as much as we like doing things uh, not by hand, in the end it worked out much easier just to ditch the sander and do this by hand with different layers of sandpaper. This small little clip is actually the outcome of about three hours of work as she cut through different layers of varnish and ancient paint. Using the same uh, wood treatment oil that we used on the side panels and on the staircase, uh, Drew is able to add uh, a couple of layers of oil to the windowsill itself. It really brought the colour of the oaks coming through again. Um, and it brought this area to life. Why on earth someone put tiles on this when it was so easy to repair, we've no idea. And the end result of the shelf uh, looks quite nice. It really matches in with the wood underneath, which is the main important thing. Why someone would have put tiles on there, I don't know. But you can see the gorgeous sort of carving there. That bit at least is finished for now. One of the things we've never noticed before, is this is the, the ceiling of the, the, um, the window. And unlike all the other sort of tops of the windows, it's no panelling. There's panelling here obviously on the side none on the top. So we're going to take this off and see what's underneath it. We may live to regret this. So with the panel down, you can see why they've done it. There should be a panel in the middle here. Make like that. Um, what, what's obviously happened is for some unknown reason, the middle bit's rotted. And instead of just replacing it and showing this lovely bit of um, woodwork off, it's just covered it. So we've got to decide now whether to put the cover back on or try and repair it. There's clearly been some water damage at some point, but it is uh, it is quite dry. There's nothing there at the moment. And this bit here, this split, that's the original oak beam of the house. So I'm not worried about the split. It's nice and solid. I'll show you from downstairs. There's the window and there's the, the bit that's at the top. So I think we need to do, we do need to replace that so that it matches. We can then sand all that down. It's a bit of a bigger task than we wanted, but it will look lovely once it's done. In creating the, the bit for the top, I've looked at the panelling around the house. Uh, there's two or three different types of panelling. This is a, a window panel in the blue room. Um, and you can see here, there's a nice sort of bit of beading here. And then the middle panel is a square panel with a sculpted edge. Um, and that's on both the panels up the window, but also repeated along the top of the window. But in other areas of the house, this one is the dining room. This is the window here, where it's a square without that extra sculpture. It goes all the way to the top. The top also is exactly the same. And then when we look at the, the landing window, it's square and it goes all the way to the top. It doesn't have the sculpture, which means when I replace the top bit, 
I only need to put a square in the middle, I don't need to add any extra sculpting to it, um, so therefore it will match. So for the moment, I've just made a piece of wood um, that's suitable enough to hang the light. I've started making it look right. I've put it in the hole. I haven't finished it because we've got guests coming and we need a landing light. That's why you can also see that, that wire sort of just coming down in there so I can get a landing light up there. We'll have to finish that in another week. And before the guests arrived, whilst I was adding the lamp back to the hall, Julie quickly also did the outside windows of the cottage. Uh, these are the windows and the French doors uh, that have been hit by a bit of weather. They just need a quick sand down and a revarnish to make them watertight for another couple of years. Windows have become a bit of a bugbear of the whole project. We have 32 windows in total, and we seem to spend every moment of every day thinking about windows, cleaning windows, repainting or revarnishing them. We finished this week with a lovely Indian meal, inspired by our time spent in Asia. Bon appetit. Here is the first course, it's a starter. It is momos and a lovely sweet chili chip inside pork and kimchi. After 17 years in Asia, it was really hard to, to narrow down one beer. So we decided to have one of each. For second starters, we have some prawn crackers, a homemade mango chutney, an apple and plum archer and a banana archer. A coconut snow sorbet followed, along with some sherbets uh, made out of mango juice. A time there. Yeah, yeah, he's like, hey, yeah, go on, start, 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 start. <laughs> Right, and then I'll get you the beers while you're there then. An Indian greed curry made out of coriander and some coconut rice, followed by a lovely Mars bar vodka that the girls made during the afternoon. Thanks for joining us again this week. Uh, we've got more work to finish on the windows as we move towards Christmas. Um, I'll leave you with this lovely image of the table because we forgot to turn the camera around when we were videoing um, us varnishing the woodwork. Thanks for joining. Thank you.